Hey guys, and welcome back to the very last episode in our three-part tutorial series on how to make your very own animated Minecraft intro. So this is the last part. This is actually going to be relatively quick. Um, this is going to involve us rendering out these images and we'll stitch together our final composition uh, in After Effects or uh, you can use Final Cut or uh, you know any, any uh, program that allows you to import an image sequence. So we've got our animation. I'm just going to review that. We've got our chest and our carrots particles coming out and that's all looking good. So this is over a 100 frame range and with rendering I'm going to go and click on the clapperboard icon with these two dots next to it. It's going to bring up my render settings and I'm going to change this over from the uh, Maya software render to mental ray. And uh, I'm going to change the image format to targa. And I'm going to change the frame extension to name underscore number dot extension. And then I'm going to, the start frame is going to be 1 and the end frame is going to be 100. That's where our animation finishes. Renderable camera is going to be our camera 1. That's this view here that we've created. And the final size, I think I'll go for a uh, HD 720 uh, by 1280. So we'll just leave that as is. And uh, most of that's looking good. So we can come in here and uh, we'll click on our uh, camera view here and I'm just going to press the space bar while my mouse is in this side of the screen and that's going to enlarge the view so it's full screen and I'm going to click the uh, single clapperboard here which uh, will render out the frame for me and uh, so this is what I've got so far so not particularly interesting at the moment I'm going to go through and just open this up so I can have a look at my carrot textures as well ah so this is a bit of a problem we need to fix. So what we're going to do is um, the reason this is happening is because the file textures for these carrots are so low resolution. They're only 16 by 16 pixels and so the uh, rendering engine is actually filtering them and uh, normally that's what we want but for Minecraft uh, we really want to stay true to the pixel uh, the pixel look. So we're going to grab, I'll just select my carrot and then uh, over here in our uh, Lambert 5, I'm going to actually rename this to uh, carrot underscore texture. Forgot to do that earlier. Um, if I click on this black button, this is going to send me through to the uh, input connections. And you can see at the top here, there's a filter type. And I'm going to change this from quadratic to off. And if I click the clapperboard again, this will render. And I'm hoping this looks a lot better. So. Now that that's looking better, it, the overall scene looks a little bit too dark to me, so I'm going to go back to my uh, carrot, and then underneath the color, we have an ambient color, and that's actually going to boost the uh, overall brightness. So I'm going to change this to about half of the way through, and I'm just going to pull this to the side, and I'm going to select my chest as well, and I'm going to change the chest texture to about halfway through on the ambient, and also the lock texture to halfway through. There is one other thing, and that is the color of our rim, um, Lambert 4. I'm again going to rename this to rim texture. And again, I'm going to pull the ambient color halfway through. So we can actually click this green button here. That'll save one of the images. And then we can go ahead and click the clapperboard again, render out a comparison. And that's looking a lot brighter. And if we can, we can actually scrub between the two and see the difference. So I'm liking this second version. It's a lot brighter. It looks a lot better. You might just like to take a few more test renders. We can do one when it's fully closed here. We'll have a look at that. Pretty standard. And then uh, one with everything falling out, just to make sure it's uh, it's all looking fine. Nice. I'm excited. So the last thing to do is just to adjust some of our render quality settings. So in back in the render settings window, under the uh, tab quality, I'm going to change the, uh, the quality from 0.25. I'm going to just bump that up to 1. I'm going to go for full quality here. And uh, I'm just going to take another test render of that to make sure everything checks out. There we go. That's looking a bit better. I just um, I've bumped up the quality just to uh, help out the anti-aliasing, so we don't have any jagged edges. And uh, if I look at a full screen preview, that's actually looking pretty smooth. So that's pretty much all that we have to do. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'll close this out, and uh, I'll come back under the common tab here, 
And uh, under the file name prefix, I'm going to give this a meaningful name. This is going to be the name of every image that comes out of our render. So I'm going to change this to um, chest carrot, and I'll just leave that. And uh, down here, we can see that the uh, name, which we've specified up here, is going to be preceded by under underscore and then what number frame it is dot targa, which is our extension. So I'm going to leave that as is and just do a final check through everything's looking good okay all that's left to do now is to render out the final images you can see that this is going to put our images into the uh, images folder that we uh, that was actually created for us when we set up our project to start off with so I'm happy with all of that check through and to get this render started I'm gonna go under the rendering tab to render batch render. I'm going to click the option box and uh, that's all looking good. I'm just going to click batch render and close. And uh, once that's all done, I'll uh, be back with you in After Effects and we'll stitch this all together. And welcome back. If that's your first time ever rendering something, uh, for it to take a long time is totally normal. So you should be prepared to spend at least a few minutes or so rendering out those images. So I'm here in After Effects right now. Uh, you, you really can use uh, the program of your choice, be it Final Cut or uh, you know whatever can read in your image sequence. But I've decided I'm going to use After Effects and I'm going to use one of the built-in plugins to, to do the light ray effect here. So I'm going to double click in my project window um, that's going to prompt me with an import file dialog. Uh, you could also just go file, uh, import, and then click file if that doesn't work for you. And now uh, going back up to my project window, I can see the images folder is where I have this big series of images that have been rendered out. And I'm going to select the first one, making sure that the uh, target sequence checkbox is indeed ticked, and I'll click import. I'll just bring that in with a straight and I'm going to drag and drop this into a new composition and uh, we can see that right here and uh, there's our animation you can see all of our carrots spilling out and it's uh, it's looking too good but uh, you know we can fix that up so I'm going to import another file now this will be actually included uh, in my download description uh, this is just a background image although you can make your own um, so I'm going to bring that in here and I'll drop that below my um, my carrot animation and you can see what I've got so far doesn't really look too great. Um, that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. It's going to be a solid layer. And I'm going to just use a black fill. And just click OK. And that's coming in the middle there. That's where I want it to be. I'm going to... Um, what I'll do is I'll click and hold on the uh, rectangle tool. And I'll actually select the ellipse tool. And then I'm going to go ahead and double click that just to draw an elliptical mask around this black solid. And uh, down here under the mask uh, options, I'm going to invert it. And then pressing M twice, uh, three times, sorry, on my keyboard, I'm going to bring up the mask feather and expansion. And I'm just going to feather this and uh, just expand it out a tiny little bit. Just give it a bit more there. Just roughly like that. And the last thing I'm going to do is actually take my background image and I'm going to apply a blur. So that's under effect, blur and sharpen. I'm going to use a fast blur. Uh, I'll probably use about, about 50 pixel blur and I'll click repeat edge pixels. So there's my simple background. Again, you can use the one I'm including or you really can use anything uh, from the internet or perhaps you want to make your own. Uh, even something you can record in game. You know, there's plenty of uh, freedom of creativity there. So now we've got the background and we've got my animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the light ray effect to the animation. So selecting the, uh, the chest carrot layer, I'm going to go to effect, generate, CC light burst, uh, 2.5. That's the one here. And you can see that this is kind of streaking the, uh, all the um, pixels outwards. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and duplicate that layer, hitting control D. And then selecting the uh, layer that's on top, I'm going to disable the uh, light burst effect. So I'm simply just going to delete that. And now you have the light bursting from behind the uh, layer. And I'm going to go ahead and select my light burst layer. I'm just going to play with these settings a little bit just to give me a bit more, uh, bit more intensity here. Maybe a bit more length. I'm just going to see what this looks like. 
it's looking good so you can see it's starting off here and it's going to have these light streaks beaming out from it and then it will erupt in an explosion of color and we can even grab the uh, pivot point in here nice that looks pretty cool so I would encourage you just to play around with this until you find something that you like um, it's definitely a fun effect to play around with and um, now that we've got that done I'm just going to import my nameplate. So if you're making an intro for your channel, you probably already have a logo that you've created or um, perhaps you should create your own logo, but I've just used a, uh, a little logo that I made here for um, this particular tutorial. I'm just going to import that image. And if you want to use this, I've actually included it in the download files as well. And this is, uh, of course, Carrot Juice Gamer with a 9. So I'm going to import my nameplate as well, and I'm actually going to put that... Uh, below the chests but above the black solid and you can see it there in the background and so what I'm going to do is just um, scale this down a tiny bit and I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to transition this in so I'm going to select it and go effect transition and I'm going to use a linear wipe I'm going to set the wipe angle to zero so it wipes up and down and I'm just oh, there you go you can see it wiping I'm going to give it a bit of a feather there we go and I'm going to start the, the transition at 100% completed. And I think I'm going to have this um, fade in just as this all falls out of the scene. So uh, I, can, um, I can set my keyframe here. So I'll click the little stopwatch to set a keyframe. And then I'm going to move forward just a little bit, maybe say 10 frames or so. And then I'm going to put the transition completion all the way down to zero. So that now, as my as my carrots and my chest fall out of the scene, it reveals the title. Nice. From here, I'm just going to add a little bit of flash. Um, selecting the title again, I'm going to go to Effect, uh, Generate, and I'm going to do CC Light Sweep. Here we go. And that's just going to add a little highlight. I'm just going to boost the intensity. There we go. And maybe the direction, uh, sorry, the width a little bit. There we go. And then I'll just start it off on the side. So as this um, as this fades in, I'll set another keyframe here by just clicking the stopwatch on the center. And then by the end, I'll just um, drag the center over so we get this little shimmer uh, once we uh, see the actual uh, title reveal. The last thing I'm going to do is just set it so I'm going to come back just before it fades in. Selecting the layer, I'm going to press S. It brings up the scale. Set a keyframe. I'm going to move right to the end. And I'm going to scale this back up to 100. And I'm going to do the same for the background as well. Um, go to the very start this time. Um, set a, a keyframe on scale for 100. And I'm going to go through to the end. And I'll go for, say, 110. All right, I'm uh, pretty happy with that. Let's see what we've got. Okay. Not too bad if I do say so myself. So you really have the tools to change this up however you'd like. You can use your own background, you can use your own nameplate or apply your own effects in After Effects, and you can use your own uh, chest design or your own objects spilling out of it. And even the way you animate them is up to you. So. You know, I hope you really take these powers, uh, the power of creativity and imagination and combine it with some of the tools you've learned in this lesson and I'm really looking forward to seeing what people go on and create. So that pretty much brings us to the end of our uh, three-part tutorial series. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, leave a comment below or give me a thumbs up. It lets me know that you like this kind of stuff and I'll do more in the future. Well, guys, thanks for joining me. I'm uh, Andrew for Mr. AC Pilot and uh, I'll see you next time.